Welcome to the VMware Site Recovery Manager 5 uh, video presentation. My name is Andrew Elwood. I'm a senior technical instructor with VMware Education Services. This video is going to incorporate uh, all of the features of SRM5 along with an installation tutorial so that you can get the maximum out of your deployment of SRM. Uh, the first module that we're working through today is SRM5 Concepts and Architecture. And we're going to be taking a look at the structural architecture and the pieces that make SRM what it is. Um, so SRM itself, or Site Recovery Manager, is nothing more than an end-to-end -end disaster recovery orchestration product. And that's an important concept because um, there is no such thing as a disaster recovery product by itself. You can't buy disaster recovery as a single entity. It's really a tool that you get to leverage uh, to be able to help you in recovering from disasters. And so realistically, we're looking at an orchestration product as, as the primary tool behind this. Um, it allows us to automate the full recovery of virtual machines that reside on replicated storage in your data center. And we'll talk a little bit more about the whole concept of replicated storage as we go through this presentation. So the four-step disaster recovery process with SRM5 is based around uh, these simple elements. First of all, at the protected site, when SRM is installed and configured properly, uh, the first step is to shut down virtual machines, starting with virtual machines that you, the administrator, has designated as the lowest priority of those VMs. And some folks will ask the question, why? I mean, if there's been a disaster, why would I bother shutting down virtual machines? Aren't they already shut down? And the answer is, perhaps. And we can't necessarily take that risk. Because of the way virtual machines write to disk and the ongoing replication that we could have in the background, we really don't want to take a chance when it comes down to shutting off these virtual machines or not shutting them off. So SRM will try to shut them off. If the shutdown fails, it's no problem. The recovery process continues as expected. Step two is at the recovery site, that's your designated recovery environment, whether that's in a data center that's right next door or whether that's across a wide area network link, SRM will then prepare the data stores themselves, the replicated disk uh, components for the failover. That would allow the ESXi servers in the recovery site to mount those replicated data stores and take the necessary actions to be able to start up those virtual machines. Um, the other idea behind SRM, and it's one of the fundamental concepts, is SRM gives us the opportunity to run what's known as a shared uh, recovery site. So our recovery site, the one which is going to take over in the event of a, a disaster, could in fact be running virtual machines uh, for production purposes for another division of the company or perhaps your test and dev environment. So if we're expecting the, those same ESXi servers to start up uh, inbound virtual machines because of the failover, the idea is to shut off those virtual machines that are considered unnecessary to make room for virtual machines that are going to be required when we go through the failover process. So in other words, mark those that are considered non-critical to be turned off first in a safe fashion so that we can make more room for resources that are going to be necessary for those virtual machines to start up that are considered our mission critical applications in the event of a failover. And then SRM finally starts those virtual machines at the recovery site. Um, the interesting part about this is the SRM administrator has full control in the recovery plans over designating startup orders, uh, dependency sequences, and all of the necessary pieces so that your uh, entire environment can come back essentially without interaction. And that, in my books, is probably one of the biggest benefits. A failure occurs, well, that's terrible. But the reality is our systems can take effect uh, in such a way that they will then automatically restart and not have to panic uh, the administrator themselves. So the SRM features. Um, full centralized management is the key to this process. We can create, test, update, execute these recovery plans. And a recovery plan is nothing more than that. It's a series of things that we want to do. And that recovery plan, as we'll see later on in the series, could be to recover from a failed storage area network resource, or it could be from an entire failed data center. Um, and it's up to the administrator themselves to provide that particular recovery plan. Um, and with these disaster automation processes that we build into SRM, you can build those recovery plans in advance. You can test all of those recovery plans. And that's actually a, a, a very interesting thing. There's a lot of people who think they have a good recovery plan, uh, pencil and paper, or maybe even an automated one, but it's never gone through full testing. 
And what most people are surprised to learn is once they do go through testing and it fails, of course, now they've got more downtime than they ever planned on, and it could fail in such a way that they're not recoverable. And that's generally considered a bad thing for most companies. Uh, we can automate the execution of said recovery plans, and then the integration is fully built into uh, vCenter itself, uh, such that we can recognize the virtual machines that we have in our environment. We can also integrate with our storage replication vendors themselves. So if we've got our uh, storage environment uh, is providing the replication for us, we can leverage that and have full awareness of that process going on in the background. One of the coolest things we brought out with SRM5 was the additional uh, feature called vSphere replication. And what this now does is for um, shops that are not trying to do storage area network-based replication or have not invested in that technology, we can deploy something very simple which allows our ESXi servers to perform the replication on a virtual machine by virtual machine basis. So given that, um, this makes full SRM implementations much more affordable for small and medium business organizations. And on top of that, even for the large enterprise sites in workload environments where they're not perhaps as mission critical as those they designate for their storage replication, which is the most expensive of the storage that they typically run within their environment. Uh, it's relatively efficient, it's managed on a virtual machine by virtual machine basis, and the way we deploy it, as you'll see in the later modules, uh, is a pair of uh, virtual appliances, which for um, ESXi administrators or vSphere administrators uh, is something that um, is becoming more and more the norm for deploying these utility type uh, environments. The other thing that SRM5 brings to the table is this feature called planned migration. And if anyone's ever had to go through a data center migration where they're relocating a data center or they're repurposing some systems from one data center to another, there are some challenges behind that. And SRM5 gives us the ability to do what we call a planned migration. And behind this one, the concept is very simple. Shut down the virtual machines on the site that we're looking to retire or the, the components that we're looking to retire synchronize the disks that are under the covers as of the state of the shutdown, and then um, replicate, give, give the replication engine a chance to replicate that data across the wire to the new uh, production environment, and then start up those virtual machines in the new production environment. The interesting part, the reason this one differs from a disaster recovery or a, uh, a true failover is that if there are any errors encountered along the way, we're going to stop that process. And that's an important feature if you're looking to do a planned, reliable migration. If we have an error, we're going to stop, we're going to let the administrator fix that error and then continue onwards or restart the migration perhaps next weekend or at the next most convenient interval. So a very, very powerful tool for anyone who's looking to migrate systems between uh, different environments. And that might also include doing things like changing the IP addresses to all of the virtual machine workloads that you're migrating across. Um, and trust me, for anyone who's ever done that task manually, that's a, that's a feature not to be underestimated. Uh, very, very powerful tool. The other feature that we bring to the table with SRM5 is the concept of an automated failback. So, if we assume that we've performed a failover operation, we have the opportunity with SRM5 now to use what we call a single button reprotect and then subsequently potentially even perform a failback. The problem with going through a failover operation is that now you're not protected. And what ends up having to happen is we need to rebuild our recovery plans such that the recovery plans work in the opposite direction. We reprotect the virtual machines that failed from the protected site to the recovery site originally, such that then if there happens to be another failure on the new protected site, we can then have those VMs fail back. Um, a very, very powerful set of tools, one button reprotect, and uh, uh, one of the features that our customers have long been asking for ever since the release of SRM 1.0. Um, so we're very proud to be able to deliver that particular feature set with this release. Um, the other thing is that we support various different disaster recovery topologies. So the idea is this. If you have a protected data center, your production data center, you can go and acquire a dedicated uh, data center for failover purposes, and you would need to have a, a number of ESXi servers running essentially in standby mode. They would be fully up and functional, but not doing anything else. 
with the intent being that if we have a failure in the protected data center, that uh, ESXi server in the recovery data center would be able to take over and run those virtual machines that have been brought into the new recovery site. Great. Not a lot of customers have got the money to be able to deploy that. The active-active failover process has become very, very popular with SRM. The idea is that we've got a protected and a recovery site. Maybe you've got a New York City and a Chicago office. Your New York City office is going to fail over to the Chicago office if there's a failure event, or vice versa. Chicago will fail over to New York City, with the assumption that not both of them would fail at the same time. I think we've got bigger problems if that type of a situation ever occurs. Um, but the good news about this is that we can actively use resources in both sites, and then we can take steps through the SRM automation process to shut off those unused virtual machines to make room for some of those inbound virtual machines as a failover happens to occur. Um, so, active active failover. Full bidirectional failover, each acts as a recovery for the other, okay? Uh, so you're running full production on both sites. Um, you could argue that active active and bidirectional are very, very similar. Um, most customers won't see a real difference between them because realistically it's just a matter of choosing if we're going to shut off some workloads to make room for the incomings or not. And then last but not least, the concept of a service provider for SRM, and that would be the shared recovery site process. Um, could be useful for branch to central office deployments, also useful for service providers who are looking to provide SRM failover sites for customers who are going to protect their sites in the primary environment. That pretty much covers the overview of the feature set of SRM5. Um, to get more information about this, uh, we can always go to uh, VMware Education Services. We run maintain a website uh, in the back end, uh, which has got um, all of these things, vmware.com slash education, or if you're looking for certification services, vmware.com slash certification. Mm -hmm.